What's up YouTube? Today's video is gonna be about how to craft the 11 link wand. Now on the reddit thread it says it was a 12 link wand but in reality it's actually only 11 links as one of the links is taken over by the instack mod of adds 1 to 6 lightning damage to attacks with this weapon per 10 intelligence. Now this wand at first I thought was a lot easier to, easier to craft than it really was and it turns out that I was completely wrong and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Now before we get into the bulk of the video about crafting, be sure to use the timestamps because the format of these videos are pretty much like a vlog in that I try to give you an update on what's going on with my character and what I'm doing in gaming related. So if I'm ever playing another game then you might see some other content about the other game. But for now and for the foreseeable future it will mostly only ever be about PoE especially with the upcoming events which I do intend to play. So let's get straight into the gear. I'm going to go over it pretty fast. I'm going to go over what potential upgrades I have because at this point I feel like the character is pretty good and I don't know how much more I'll up upgrade it as it's able to do every single thing in the game. So first things first, at the start of this character's journey I did not think that it was going to be possible to actually reach a high level purely through leveling only in simulacrums. As you can see I'm level 96. And it turns out this character is pretty tanky in Simulacrum purely because it is CI and it has a huge ES pool and it has 90% evasion or 92% evasion and it also has some physical damage reduction at the same time. It also uses Castle Damage taking a mortal call with frenzy charge with well, endurance charges because we have Warlord's Mark to give us endurance charges when we hit the boss. So overall the character is really tanky. I do know it uses Mage Blood, but at this point, this is a purely high budget build, this concept. And yeah, so for the one, I found out that for almost all content in the game, you probably do not need to actually have a weapon swap. At a certain point, KB damage just becomes so high that I was killing Wave 30 Simulacrum with double HP mods with just KB. There are some mods where it's so hard with double HP and lightning res where you might want to have the weapon swap but it feels kind of really bad to be investing into a whole nother mirror and squire just for a weapon swap for a uh, ability that you probably will cast like once or twice or three times in simulacrum. And if you ever do maven you could just or any like boss in a different area you could always just gem swap two gems and that's literally all you need to do. So you swap out kinetic blast with uh, power Siphon and this one with Barrage. So it just comes down to how much you really want the convenience factor of never gem swapping. But for a lot of bosses like Awakener, Maven and stuff like that, gem swapping is perfectly fine and not that big of a deal. So this helm, I'm using a KB helm. I stopped using the Power Siphon helm purely because I was barely casting Power Siphons anymore. This helm, I have another helm in the lab enchant service to get berserk effect because i believe that's the best one amulet not really going to upgrade mirror amulet is like 2.5 percent dps uh chest piece mirror chest piece is like what i think it's 2.5 percent uh damage increase and it's 55 int and these rings uh, you could get a percent int ring but i think conductivity ends up being better this could be a t1 int roll but i'm kind of lazy about rolling it this ring is pretty much as good as it's going to get unless you get a mirror tier ring. And boots, pretty much perfect. Almost mirror tier except the fact that it's easy to make if you ever buy the suffixes. Gloves, I don't think you can really get much better of an implicit with it and attack speed. And mage blood, I should probably get a belt enchant. But as you can see here, the gear is pretty much... I'm satisfied with it completely. So... In terms of the large clusters, I did buy two more large clusters yesterday. I bought a 12, 25% 9 ES8 in 4 attributes. This was like 50 exalts. Now the nice thing to note for a lot of people is if you can get T1 int and T1 attributes, 25% and 35% do the same thing. So you can see here, 25% gives you 10 int 5 attributes. And I have a 35% 8 4 one here. And you can see it also gives 10 int and 5 attributes. So only thing that 35% actually does is it gives you more energy shield by a little bit. But you can see here that this, this jewel is worth less than this one in terms of what it actually gives you. But this jewel was much, much cheaper than this one. So there's something to know. A lot of people don't really know that 25% and 35% are actually pretty much the same thing. So you can see here, this one is actually worse in terms of intelligence than this one. 
because this one gives 10 and 5 and this one gives 9 and 5 because it's 35%, 7-4. And you can't divide it because it's corrupted. Now, as you can see here for this tree, the next points, I'll just be filling out these uh, points at top. And I'll probably spend the next two points and get the crit multi thing and the crit mastery. Or I can get reduced crit taken because let's just say that critical strikes are pretty much the only thing that kills me in Simulacrum. But that's just a quick update for the character. And as always, Occultist and Berserker for the Ascendancy. So let's go straight into how we can craft the wand as the wand is quite a journey. So you can see here is the crafting thread. So in any showcase the owner when they put an item on reddit they have to go through the crafting process now we can learn a few things about this crafting process because it does illustrate one of the many ways to craft items and this is pretty much how most end game items are crafted so this item is a little different from the sword in that you awaken orb to gather two wands to obtain a shaper and elder influence id3 imbued wand base now the reason you might be wondering is why they don't just awaken orb items together to get the prefixes in the start. The reason being is that the mods you want are all shaper for the prefix and you want to finish the prefix first because the weightings are so low on it. So in any type of crafting you always want to start with the lowest weighting thing first if you can guarantee it. So that's why people alt for plus two arrows and that's why for this mod here we're going to find the lowest value one and then we're going to alt it. Because you should see here, all of the mods we want are on Shaper. So we can't use Awaken Orb together to do it with Elder to get the prefixes. So that's why we start with IAD3, Imbued Wand. So let's just, so I actually tried out the crafting process before this video, just to try it out to make sure that everything worked out. So right now you probably just transmute and you just alt forever, right? Until you get Lightning Pen. Now, for the sake of this video and for time, I will probably be skipping some of the, or not skipping the steps, but I will be making it faster by choosing it. So right now, we have it here. Oh, we need to get rid of one of these mods. So, well, it needs to be blue, so that's the problem. Okay, so we made a blue. So after that, we alt it, and then we prefix this cannot be changed onto the magic base. Now, the reason we want to do this is this whole way of crafting this wand is going to be with meta mod crafting and the reason for this is prefixes cannot be changed is something that you can spam in that there's no need to find like a remove and add influence craft so here you have prefixes cannot be changed and the beauty of doing this is that we can now use imprint beast so we go to beast crafting and then we imprint it so that means when we use reforged attack or reforged lightning if we miss it, we can re-imprint it and don't have to re-alt this thing and we don't have to recraft. prefixes cannot be changed. So you can see here, the reason we chose Lightning Pen is because it's a 100 weighting, which is actually just insanely low. So now you can see the craziness of what happens. So now you imprint the wand and use Harvest to reforce Lightning and reforce Attack, hoping to guide either the in-stacking mod or the 40% more damage mod. So... For this purpose, we're just going to reforge attack over and over again until we get, what's it called, the mods that we want. So if you don't get it, you can pretty much just assume that you're re-imprinting it back. Oh, wait, what? You re-imprint it back and then you go again until you hit that one mod that you want. So this could take quite a while, honestly. And I actually did this for a lot. In the while well, I was testing out before the video, and this craft is actually just fucking insanity. Right. It could take you so long to hit this. Now you might think like, oh, I just need to hit it once, but the fact of the matter is, once you get the mod and that's the wrong one, you have to craft on suffixes cannot be changed or prefixes cannot be changed again, and go for it again. So this is probably one of the most insane crafts that I've seen personally, at least in the method. Now you might be wondering why don't you just remove and add influence uh, or try to aug influence. The fact of the matter is at this point in time that, so you can see this mod is not bad, right? So if you could keep this one. So a lot of times when people go for these 11 link wands or 12 link items, they try, they have some items 
they have some mods that are outs. Like theoretically, you could use wed or elemental damage with attacks, and that's what my old wand is, because they probably just got this while doing this crafting method. But you can see here, you could pretty much spend like hundreds of exalts trying to get this, and this is what makes a mirror item so expensive. The mirror item is expensive because it costs so much to try to get it, and it is quite a journey to get this. So you could also use reforged lightning to try to get it. So let's try some reforged lightnings to see if we can get the mod. And if we can't get the mod, I'm just going to craft it on just to illustrate what it's like. I mean, what is the chances you can't get this thing? This is actually just absurd. So I have no idea how this person actually got the craft done. Oh, we finally got it. So like you can see that like, each one of these attempts is two exalts and an imprint beast. But right now, all influence is like 50, 60, 70 X, which is 0.2 of a mirror. So you can see here that this is the only way that you could actually craft it because otherwise you will just run out of, there just won't be any crafts to do it on with. So right now you have to annul it off and we got lucky. If you missed the annul, you have to go back and imprint and yeah, you just do it again. So now is the hard part. So you get this one thing here and now they want to craft the prefixes and use the appropriate reforce and then prefix lock. And you, if you do not obtain the third prefix, annul the wand and reforge again until a desirable prefix is removed. Revert the imprint as needed. So it's back to basics, right? Prefixes cannot be changed and you just pray because this took a lot, right? Now you have to reforge attack to try to get it. So each one of these things, imagine doing it all over again. So if you got this, you got, you got it, right? Would you redo it? I probably would not do it because this step probably took me forever to get. So this is... 30 LE damage of attacks, but this is just worse than soccer to attacks deal 40% more attack damage. But I would probably have kept that. I don't really know how many times this I will I have to do to see the mod that I want. So will we actually ever get this thing again? So you can see here, crafting this item is insanity with the way they did it. I don't really know how lucky the person got because they never really said how many attempts they use, but maybe they use a lot. Like normally you could say, oh, why do you do it like this? Is there a different way of doing it? You could do remove non-influence, add influence for this. So like say you had this step here. If harvest or like this craft was more common on TFT, you could remove non-influence, add influence, and you could probably get it a lot faster this way, right? Because this thing guarantees you to have a uh, influence mod. Well, ideally you will want to fill out your suffixes first, but ideally here you could aug influence with suffixes filled out and you could do it like that. But the fact of the matter is that these crafts just don't exist in any supply. So am I really not going to get this for the video? Come on. I did this yesterday. I got it pretty fast, but basically I think it's time to cheat. It's time to break out. It's time to break out the the cheating device. Okay, so let's just say Chris Wilson came down and he decided to bless us with the RNG and we are able to just choose the mod and add it onto the weapon, which is Sokka the attacks deal 40% more attack damage. So that was quite painful. So at this point, the prefixes of the wand are complete and you're pretty much one of the luckiest person in PoE. To attain the first suffix, prefix locks the wand and use reforged crit crafts until you have either crit link and then is going to be the hard part or this is so you thought the prefixes were hard right the next part the suffixes is actually even harder so again you have prefixes cannot be changed at this point you have all of your prefixes and now you pretty much just reforge crit until you get the what's it called crit chance mod or crit damage so you have this one so what they want you to do here is they want you to beast slam it and the reason you use a beast slam with I-75 is you limit the amount of mods that you can get so that you block off a lot of the higher mods at like I-83. So the chances are still very, very low, but doing a beast slam does give you the best bet. So I don't even know if you can do a beast slam on here. So it's just a shame, right? There's some limitations on this, but let's just say you exalt it. And at this point, this video is getting pretty long. So let's just try to get lucky. So at this point, you have this mod here. You didn't hit it. I guess I could just keep trying to exalt it. So if you don't hit it, 
you could choose to go back, do the reforge crit again until you get it, and then try another ex lucky exalt but with the beast with 75 eye level. But at a certain point in time, you can see why this craft without a more par popular harvest is a really crazy idea. Because you could just do remove non-influence, add influence if you actually had the money or if these crafts existed. And what you're looking for here is, yeah, so you got level 20 crit damage. And at this point, you think like, oh, what's the next step? Next step is to aug influence, or you can craft on a random suffix and do remove non-influence, add influence again. And at this point, it's a 1 in 28 to get faster attacks T1, which is what we want. I actually think it's a 1 in, yeah, it's a 1 in 28. Final step, once you have two pseudo link suffixes, is to augment and influence and seriously hope you're fortunate enough to get the final pseudo link. Odds on this step is just 1 out of 28 and aug influence costs about 20% of a meter to try. So here we go, will we get it? Nope. 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 Holy moly. I think at this point I just vol the one. Fuck this shit, right? Okay. Maybe not, but... Alright, so this is why my wad has onslaught on it, because they settled with something like this, right? Or the first one did. So we got it, right? So this is actually the identical one that we got. Took a lot of steps. You can see here, this craft is insane. So show the crafter some love and go mirror it, because you're probably not going to be making this thing anytime soon. This craft was a lot harder than I expected purely because the prefixes started off with it all being on shaper and the suffixes are pretty much the same as doing the claw but basically you also couldn't start this item off as the claw at level 75 because you can't awaken warp it together so it makes it a lot harder to craft. Now there are more outs to it, like you don't need to get every single one of these mods exactly, like theoretically you can have like my weapon swap one and you can settle with elemental damage with attacks and you can also settle with onslaught, right? But in terms of the best best one, this is actually the best one on path of building in terms of what you would get. Only thing that would be better is if you got T1 faster attacks instead of uh, level 18 faster attacks, but absolutely crazy craft, right? Makes me never want to attempt these crafts. But the craft, as you can see, would be a lot easier if remove non-influence, add influence actually existed with any uh, regularity. So let's go see how many remove non-influence, add influences are on TFT. So this is where you pretty much buy all of your crafts from, which is the harvest, want to sell channel, and then you can control F, remove non-influence, add influence. And let's see what we have here. So one person sold it yesterday for 35x, so... Another person sold for 35x. So you can see there's a few a day. So you could technically probably do it if you could get all of these crafts, but these crafts just come up so rarely. And there's so many people trying to make these items now. And that this is the reason why the claw hasn't been made yet. The guy, Cuban, has been trying to get the last suffix. He's had 18 attempts at it or something, and he's missed getting crit damage or whatever it is that he wants. So you can see, insanely hard craft to do, and good luck to anyone else who attempts it in the next leagues. But I hope this was a pretty eye-opening video about crafting, and how much money the big crafters are actually spending on making these wonderful mirror items for us. But thanks for watching everyone, I hope you find more mirrors, exalts, and mage bloods, and yeah, and alks to me, and see you next time. Oh yeah, and voices, don't forget to find the voices. And when you find the voices, don't leave it on the ground. And see you next time. Bye. Stay.